The South Pole is more than penguins and endless snow. There's a hidden ghost world within it. Look, it's right here on the globe. Don't confuse Antarctica with the Arctic, which is at the top of our maps. Much smaller in size, and let's face it, way less mysterious. The ice sheet covering Antarctica is about one to three miles thick, which is up to 16 Eiffel Towers stacked on each other. This massive blanket hides the true features and contours of Antarctica's land. We still don't know much about this mysterious continent, and it is ice and snow that are to blame. We still don't even know the true shape and size of this continent. Mapping Antarctica without some huge shovels is an incredibly hard task. But satellites learn to penetrate the ice with their cameras. And now we know there's actually an enormous, dramatic ancient landscape beneath the snow. The ghost of the past. About 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a much warmer place. It was actually a lush rainforest with tons of plants and probably teeming with life. It even had rivers flowing through it. Then the ice came. This happened about 34 million years ago, during the transition from the Eocene to the Oligocene, when our planet cooled significantly. It was the beginning of one of our several ice ages. The land remained, but now was hidden under ice and snow that got thicker and thicker. To a regular eye, Antarctica turned into a white desert, vast, flat, and featureless. Time went on. This massive ice sheet moved around, smoothing and shifting the ground beneath it. Over the millions of years, it changed what the land looked like. Now, if we looked under the ice, it wouldn't hold any signs of the original South Pole, except for one place. In areas where the ice is especially thick and doesn't move much, like in East Antarctica, it has actually worked the other way around. It became like a super thick blanket that protects the land. Normally things like wind or rain slowly wear away the ground over time, changing its shape. But since we have this protective ice blanket, it prevents these natural processes from reaching the stuff underneath. So, the ground stayed almost the same for millions of years, like it's been frozen in time. This special area near the Aurora and Schmidt subglacial basins has become the ghost of Antarctica's landscape. This place was barely touched even since it was first covered in snow 34 million years ago. This is a historical footprint, a place that can tell us what Antarctica's ground looked like before it became a freezing nightmare. As scientists peered under East Antarctica, they saw an amazing ghost. The traces of the rivers that were flowing there millions of years ago, various valleys, and some weird little islands, as well as three big chunks of land shaped like the letter U. Hey, what's that all about? You see, the continents on our planet are moving constantly, sliding along the red-hot lava mantle like cereal on milk. Over history, they came together and broke apart several times. Hundreds of millions of years ago, several continents were a part of one enormous Gondwana. Antarctica was one of them. It used to be one huge landmass. But when Gondwana broke apart, the poor continent got stretched by tectonic forces. Parts of land were pulled away from each other, whoosh, and they got torn apart. And that's how we got these big chunks or blocks of land under thick layers of ice. In any case, scientists now want to explore this ghost a bit more. But to study it deeply, they need to actually drill down through the ice, like using a straw to get to the bottom of a thick shake. This will help them pick up some rocks and dirt from way below to learn more about the Earth's history and climate. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent in the world approximately bigger than the entirety of Europe or Australia, competing with the entire South America in size. Aside from East Antarctica, we discussed there are several more regions, Antarctica Peninsula, South Pole, West Antarctica, and the Ross Sea. The continent is basically a frozen sandbox, and all its hidden, mysterious landscape is actually less explored than Mars's terrain. We only know for sure that without ice, it wouldn't just be flat and empty, but an entire world full of big mountains, huge canyons, 
and even fiery volcanoes. Some of these volcanoes are so huge that they peak above the layers of snow. In West Antarctica alone, there are at least 138 volcanoes, though only about 8 or 9 are active today. One of the craziest ones is Mount Erebus, the southernmost volcano and the tallest one on the continent, about 12 and a half thousand feet high. And deep beneath the ice sheet, this guy hosts incredible beautiful subvolcanic caves. The temperatures there are warm enough for t-shirts. The Antarctic Peninsula, or Lesser Antarctica, looks like a bunch of mountainous islands deeply underground. It has newer volcanic rocks that are part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is like a giant circle of volcanoes and earthquake zones around the Pacific Ocean. The Greater Antarctica is a huge part, almost as big as Australia. It consists of East Antarctica and the South Pole. Beneath the ice, it's a place of rocks that have been around for a very, very long time, including the special zone we mentioned. You probably know that Antarctica is nearly devoid of humans. No wonder, with a mean temperature of about minus 46 degrees Fahrenheit. But even though this place is horrifyingly cold and deserted, life still clings on. You guessed it, in the underworld. In 2017, Scientists found DNA traces of algae, moss, and even possibly unknown small animals in the deep caves. That means that even in such crazy conditions, there are still unique ecosystems thriving in little isolated warm pockets beneath the snow. There was another incredible find beneath Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf, a lively ecosystem vibing within an underground river. Scientists have long suspected that Antarctica's underworld should have some freshwater lakes and rivers. One day, a satellite spotted a groove there. They decided to explore it and used a hot water drill to melt their way through the ice. As they reached the underworld, they dropped a camera into one of those hidden fresh rivers. And at first, they thought they'd find just some rocks or something. But instead, they stumbled upon hundreds of amphipods tiny shrimp-like creatures. Little ones instantly swarmed around the lens. Shrimps blocked the camera and scientists couldn't check out what they wanted to. Pretty funny, but at least that means that there really is an important ecosystem deep within Antarctica. Now they're gonna explore it. And all this is just the beginning of the mysterious underworld. Antarctica's snow also hides the deepest canyon on Earth under the Denman Glacier. Well. Mariana Trench is still the deepest point on Earth, but it's a part of the oceanic crust, geologically speaking. Also, in 1958, explorers found a huge mountain range under the ice, as big and tall as the famous Alps Mountains. The range stretched for about 745 miles with peaks as high as 1.7 miles. And all this magnificence is buried under tons of ice. Who knows what else we might find there? Antarctica holds about 60% of our entire planet's fresh water, which means it would be pretty bad if it melted. For example, there's this Doomsday Glacier, officially known as Thwaites Glacier. It's a huge ice formation, about the size of Florida, and it's melting right now. Every year, the sea levels rise by 4% because of it. If this guy melts away completely, the sea levels all around the world will increase by 2 feet. Which might not sound like a lot, but it would be catastrophic for coastal areas. Luckily, researchers have found that even if its ice shelf were to collapse in the next 50 years, the glacier itself wouldn't retreat as quickly as they feared. It's still losing ice rapidly, but it would be quite a slow process. A vast expanse of white snow, freezing winds, lifeless landscapes, and weird, eerie signals seemingly coming from within Earth. These radio pulses occur in Antarctica, and no one can figure out what they are and where they're coming from. You see, scientists are running an experiment called ANITA, short for Antarctica Impulsive Transient Antenna. Basically, it's a bunch of detectors strapped to giant balloons and floating way up above the South Pole. Their job is to detect extremely high-energy neutrinos. How do they spot them? 
right at the moment when neutrinos come into contact with ice and produce an intense, short burst of radio waves. Now, neutrinos are these tiny, almost massless particles that don't have an electric charge. They're everywhere, and billions of them are flying through you every second, even while you're watching this video. Neutrinos come from all over the place, from the sun, exploding stars, deep space, even from under your feet. The sun pumps them out non-stop as it fuses hydrogen into helium. Stars that are going off blast out huge bursts of neutrinos during supernova explosions. When high-energy cosmic rays hit our atmosphere, they make new neutrinos that rain down on us too. And some even come from radioactive stuff decaying inside Earth. The oldest neutrinos have been flying through the universe since the Big Bang, but they're practically invisible because they almost never react with anything. That's why scientists use unbelievable experiments like Anita to try and catch even a few of them. But let's get back to that fateful day when everything changed. Normally, the radio signals produced by neutrinos bounce off the ice and fly upward. That's where Anita can catch them. This is the whole point of the experiment to study neutrinos and learn more about distant cosmic events like supernovas or whatever's happening light years away. But then something really weird happened. The detectors picked up radio waves that weren't bouncing off the ice at all. They looked like they were coming from below the horizon, from under the ice. Now, this shouldn't even be possible. According to everything we know about physics, signals can't just travel upward through solid rock and ice. One of the researchers, Stephanie Wiesel from Penn State, also said that those radio waves were coming in at super steep angles, like 30 degrees below the surface. The only way that could happen is if the signal had passed through thousands of miles of solid rock before hitting the detector. But if that were true, the rock would have completely absorbed it. So something just didn't add up. The team ran all the numbers and still got no clear answer. But for them, it was an interesting problem, since they didn't actually know what those anomalies were. What they did know was that they were probably not neutrinos. That's because if the team does detect a neutrino, that means it's traveled an insane distance without bumping into anything, possibly all the way from the edge of the observable universe. So, whatever Anita has picked up, it's not behaving like anything scientists have seen before. It might mean there's some totally new type of particle out there, or maybe something else is going on that we just don't understand yet. They publish the findings in physical review letters, but the mystery remains unsolved. No one really knows what's going on under that Antarctic ice, just that something out there isn't playing by the rules. Now, if scientists actually manage to detect and trace where those crazy fast particles come from, they can learn tons of stuff about the universe way more than even the biggest, most expensive telescopes allow us to see. You see, neutrinos basically zip through space almost at the speed of light, barely bumping into anything. It means they can carry untouched data about events that happened millions or even billions of light years away. That's why Whistle and a bunch of other researchers around the world have been building these insanely sensitive detectors to catch neutrino signals. Even the tiniest ones are super important. Because in this field, one tiny blip of data can hold a treasure chest of information. So, researchers have been designing setups in both Antarctica and South America to catch these rare particles. Anita is one of those detectors, and Antarctica's the perfect spot for it. There's hardly any radio noise, there are no cities, no traffic, and no random interference. The setup is actually pretty cool. They attach a cluster of radio antennas to a giant balloon, send it a few dozen miles up into the sky, and make it float over the endless stretches of white ice. From up there, it points downward, listening for faint radio signals coming from deep inside the ice. When one of those super rare neutrinos, specifically a tau neutrino, hits the ice, it creates another particle called a tau lepton. That lepton then shoots out of the ice and starts breaking down, losing energy and turning into smaller bits. That decay process gives off what's called an air shower, kind of like a spray of invisible sparks flying through the air. 
If we could actually see those air showers with our eyes, they'd look like someone waving a sparkler through the dark, bright streaks trailing behind as it moves. Studying the direction and pattern of these signals, the ones from the ice, ice showers, and the ones in the air, air showers. Scientists can figure out where the original particle came from. Usually it's super precise, kind of like bouncing a ball off the ground. You can predict where it'll go. But these weird new signals don't bounce the way they're supposed to. The angles are all wrong way steeper than anything the models can explain. So the team dug deeper. First, they looked at all the data from Anita's multiple balloon flights. Then they compared it against tons of computer simulations of cosmic rays and neutrinos and filtered out all the usual background noise. They even cross-checked their results with other experiments like the ice cube detector, which is also located in Antarctica, and the Pierre Auger Observatory in Argentina. They wanted to see if anyone else had picked up similar upward-going air showers. And guess what? Things got even weirder. They found nothing. No other detectors had picked up anything that could explain what Anita had seen. That's why the researchers ended up calling the whole situation anomalous. It basically means, yeah, we have no idea what this is, but it sure isn't behaving like a neutrino. Whistle explained that the signals just didn't fit into the usual picture of how particles were supposed to act. Some people have floated ideas, like maybe it's some new kind of physics or a hint of dark matter. Dark matter is basically that invisible stuff that keeps the universe from falling apart. It's everywhere. We just can't see it. Scientists have been trying to figure out what it actually is for almost a century, and it's still one of the biggest mysteries out there. Everything we can see, like stars, planets, people, dogs, makes up only about 5% of the universe, and dark matter makes up around 27%. The rest is something even stranger called dark energy. Scientists think dark matter is what gives galaxies their shape and holds everything together like cosmic glue. Without it, the universe would look totally different. It would be totally amazing to find out that this theory is true. But since Ice Cube and Augur haven't caught the same thing, that really limits the possibilities. Penn State has been in the neutrino detecting game for almost a decade now, building detectors and analyzing all kinds of cosmic signals. And the team is already working on their next big project, a brand new detector called Puel. It's going to be bigger, more sensitive, and way better at spotting those elusive neutrino signals. For now, this remains just one of those long-running cosmic mysteries that keep scientists awake at night. But the team is optimistic. When Pueo goes up, it'll have better sensors, which means if there really are more of these anomalies out there, this time they'll catch them. And maybe then we'll finally figure out what's behind them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.